I'm Bambi Francisco with Vader TV, the network for innovators. Well, I'm speaking with Matt Berzina. He's the co-founder of Zobni. He's going to talk to me about uh, the problem with email and Zobni solution. Matt, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bill, on your website it says Bill Gates. You've quoted Bill Gates and he calls Zobni the next generation of social networking, mm -hmm. which is a really nice endorsement. That was nice of him. What does he mean? Well, uh, what we realized with email is that current email clients don't really give people and relationships the prominence that they deserve. We actually think that email is kind of a latent social network. So what we built was a socially aware utility that helps you find information you need fast. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is Zobni is actually a plug into Microsoft Outlook, the biggest email client in the world, 500 million users. And um, what we do is we integrate with that through a plug-in and create mm -hmm. profiles for every person you interact with. And these profiles aren't like Facebook profiles where you have to go and enter all the data. Sure. Instead, we automatically pull that out of email. So if you click on a message from Bambi, uh, inside Zobni it will say, you know, here's the time of day when uh, she usually sends you messages. It's between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. That's when she does email. Mm -hmm. um, here's her contact information. We've automatically extracted that from an email she sent you three months ago. Her contact information? Yeah, like her it's phone number, her address, things like that. But it has to be in some formatted way, I guess. Yeah, and we find that signature, so it, okay. in the signature. Uh, and the more often it occurs, it gets strength and says, hey, we think this is her actual email address and phone mm -hmm. number. Um, below that, we show you all the people that are related to your relationship. So we actually look at the CCs and the, um, the people that are CC'd on messages with Bambi and say, hey, right. this person's been on a lot of messages with her. Uh, she's related to her. Um, below that, we show you all the conversations you've ever had with that person. Right. So, um, and we group them like Gmail does. So conversations were mo meant to be read as conversations right. as opposed to individual emails scattered through your inbox and so we group them together and show them to you. So give us an example of how you've made it more efficient to find emails. Um, so a good example is um, I get an email from my co-founder and he says, hey, have you had a chance to review that budget I sent you three weeks ago? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to go find that right now, I'd have to go searching for that. It'd take so a long time. You type in like budget, budget, and, and it would come. Name. Right, and and budget would come up in you know a bunch of different messages over all this time period. Where Zobni knows that I'm looking at a message from Adam, I'm going to be interested in information about my relationship with him, including the attachments that he might have sent me. So I'm looking at a message from Adam inside the sidebar, inside Outlook, in the attachment section. I see all the attachments he sent me, and that budget's right there. So I don't have to go back looking for it. That makes sense. Look through all the emails because you'll just see him in his profile. You'll right. see all the. Okay, so you said this is a plug-in. How yep. many? You've been around since uh, 2006. Yep. Um, how many plugins? How many people Downloads. have downloaded? Uh, so we're not releasing our current download number. Okay. Um, we so for the first year it was just in development. There's no users. About seven months ago, we uh, mm -hmm. did our private beta, mm -hmm. and during that time, we worked with about 50,000 downloads. So 50,000 users came through the pipeline. We worked with them to refine the product. Okay. Um, as we moved uh, just recently um, towards our open beta, so now mm -hmm. you can go to www.zobni.com mm -hmm. and openly download the product, and the, the growth and the download numbers have just exploded. You can you give us a sense of what they, what they are? Um, we can't say that yet. Okay. Um, That's fine. But, yeah. Well, what about for the Mac users? Because I've tried to, I, I have a problem with email. I yeah. definitely do, and I'd love something to help me organize it, but yep. I can't use Zobni. Right. What's wrong with, it, with, with Apple users? Um, well, we went after the biggest market first, so people ask yeah. us, why haven't you built something for Yahoo Mail? Why haven't you built something for Gmail? Why okay. haven't you built something for Macs? And we said, we're going to go after Windows, it has the biggest market share, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to go after Outlook because first, there's 500 million users of Outlook mm -hmm. out there, so it's the biggest one, and also, in a lot of cases, they're business users, so okay. they're the people that are willing to pay for software, their time's really valuable. So we're targeting that first, and then we'll spread to other platforms. So we'll probably go to webmail first, and Macs will be down the road. So you had acquisitions, uh, acquisition talks with Microsoft over the past few months. Um, why did that break down? Uh, that's not something I can really comment on. Um, I think it's pretty logical that Zobni would make sense as a partner with Microsoft. Uh, we've improved their core application. They've actually been really responsive. Uh, to us, for example, Bill Gates actually demoed our software yeah. in front of 2,000 people. So they've been really great to us. Um, and they're, you know, a possible acquirer. Can't Who's the other possible? Who are other possible acquirers? We actually acquirers? think that Zobni is more interesting to uh, companies out other than Microsoft because really Microsoft has these 500 million Outlook users and kind of takes them maybe for granted. If you go and look uh, at other companies, they'd love to have access to what I call the information workers homepage, which is Microsoft Outlook. Okay. So you can imagine if you're Google and you want to get people to start using Google Docs more as opposed to so Microsoft Google Word. So Google could be an acquirer. 
Google could, or if you want to integrate, say, Skype communications as your default calling an IM client. It okay. could be interesting to Skype. You get on the list to CRM uh, partners, to ERP systems. Any of these people would love to have access to somebody, the information worker's homepage, and that's what Zabni gives them. So, uh, well, you mentioned Google and Gmail. They make money through, um, it's, it's ad-supported. I recall these search and search uh, companies, companies that helped you search through your email, like X1, yep. that was um, a license, I yep. believe, or subscription fee. What's your, your business model? So we will always have a free version of the product, and that's what's out there right now. Soon we'll be offering a premium product, which will mm -hmm. have additional features on top of that. Okay. Um, and then we actually have gotten a lot of interest from big corporations. So we have you know, CIOs of Fortune 500 companies calling us and saying, hey, I want 500 of my salespeople to have this. So we'll actually have a product that will allow them to easily install this across a group, give them controls, um, and have more of an enterprise bent to it. And finally, what I think is possibly the most interesting business model is, again, we have inbound requests from big companies, and I can't list all of them, that want to have access to a space inside Outlook. Mm -hmm. well, essentially, what we've become, what we hope to become, is the, the plug-in, the API that Outlook never built. So if you're Salesforce and you want to have your Salesforce CRM data next to emails inside of Outlook, uh -huh. you go through Zobni. And they're going to charge their users for that. They'll say, hey, it's $7 a month, and we'll do a rev share on that. So I think long term, there's a huge business model around giving companies access to Outlook and okay. offering services to users there. And last question, sort of reminds me, Plaxo had a lot to do with what's the difference, change, or like could you have been the same? Uh, well, thing? so we don't want to be Plaxo. Um, we actually think there's a much bigger market around organizing all the information. In your being a dynamic address book. I yeah, I mean, what they were trying to mostly make. Plaxo becomes interesting whenever your computer crashes. And you're like, oh, where's all those? Where are all those addresses that I used to have? That is Which, true. Which it's an interesting value proposition, but you don't care about it until it actually happens. Okay. Whereas Zobni handles problems that you have every single day. So our users have this open inside their uh, Outlook screen for four hours a day, five hours a day, um, and really what we think it's akin to is Google went out and organized all the information on the web. It ends up there's two orders of magnitude more information in personal silos, in email, in IM. Yeah, and so Zobni is going out to organize all that information and make it readily accessible to, to give you fast search, manage relationships, um, and manage all this just deluge of, of information that we deal with every day. Well, I have to say you're very convincing. So um, this this was very great. I actually learned a lot. Um, Zobni, which is inbox backwards, yeah, not um, hard, not hard very though. cool company. I wish you had it on a Mac, but anyway, I'm sure you're going to do really well. Thanks so Thanks. much, Matt. I've been speaking with Matt Brezina. He is the co-founder of Zobni. I'm Bambi Francisco.